Hey guys, good morning. I've got a topic I, uh, I've tried to record a couple other videos on, but it's one of those things where it's just kind of hard to explain and hard to wrap your mind around. Um, and that is, like, it's one of the things that happens to you when you are with somebody who is emotionally and psychologically abusive. And that is, um, not everybody experiences this, but, you know, I, I know a few, quite a few people do, is the fracturing of your identity. And it can be really, really hard to overcome that. Uh, what happens is, Basically, you get so broken down, you get so demoralized um, because the abuser just picks you apart, you know, like a hyena. And you are constantly criticized. You can never do anything right. You know, you start to believe all of these things about yourself and you end up kind of like dissociating from yourself because who you are isn't acceptable it, and uh, like there's so many things wrong with you that <clears throat> you know according to the abuser that you're just this miserable wretched um, pile of traits that nobody wants basically you know you'll uh, you'll get the abuser telling you oh you know you're so lucky you have me because nobody else would put up with you um Nobody else would want you, blah, 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 etc., etc. Um, you're lucky I love you. All that stuff. So, you know, even your most positive traits can be spun negatively by a narcissist or, you know, other abuser. And, you know, when, when you've had your grasp on reality it just shattered you, you had your concept your self concept just eviscerated um you know you as a person you've been drawn and quartered probably or possibly without ever having been physically touched and that, you know, that's, there's the self-doubt, the self-loathing, the, um, the fear, everything like that, that they instill through these, uh, these manipulations and these head games. So, that's my AC on. That is the dumbest thing. You end up with this, this fracturing of yourself, uh, of the facets of who you are. And it can be really hard to reintegrate that. You know, those those pieces of yourself because you don't have an identity anymore. You you have these just these random pieces floating around and they're not connected. <clears throat> Again, it really, really hard to um, to explain it. Especially if you haven't been through it. But it is a survival thing. This, this is this is what your brain can do to protect you in this situation. And if you don't ask me how I know, it's because I've lived through it. And I can tell you that it is probably one of the most brutal things that I have been through. Um, and I've survived a lot of stuff. You know, um, Surviving the dissociation, bro, you almost ran off the road. What are you doing? Why? Um, there's really not much past that white line there, buddy. Country roads. Oh, and you're in a little tin can. It's fantastic. Anyway, anyway. So, yeah, so it's a form of dissociation, and you end up, like, you just, you don't feel like, feel like a person anymore. You don't feel like a real person. And then, 
you may end up feeling like you've got different personalities because of the way that you express yourself at different times is different. And then the abuser may tell you, um, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't think that way, feel that way, whatever. What do you, what do you have multiple personality disorder? Because they want you to, uh, respond how they want you to respond. They don't want you to respond like a normal human being would. They want it according to their script. Okay. And they can make you doubt yourself so bad that like destroy your self esteem. <clears throat> your self worth, etc. And um, so you end up with just these splinters. Sorry, my sinus is right now. Um, you end up with these these splinters of, of your personality. And you are like divorced from your emotional responses. And you, you, you don't really grasp that the way you respond in different situations, it's all still you. It's just different you know, like, it's just different emotional responses. It's, di it's different um, ways that you handle things. Like, yeah, you get mad at some, at, at some injustice. You get angry. You feel anger. Yeah, okay. You know, that's kind of appropriate. But the narcissist or abuser will pick you apart for it. And so, you know, you can end up divorcing yourself from that emotion and it can end up feeling like you're a different person because you feel that. And then, you know, you can also feel like this, this distance or this wall between you and what you feel because you're not supposed to feel it. You know, um... So you've got your your goofiness. Like me, I've got my silliness. I am usually pretty silly at work, as I've mentioned. And there are definitely some situations that call for some seriousness. And situations that call for a lot of seriousness. And um, how you respond to those... You know, if you're if you're not responding exactly the same way to every single 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 situation all the time, it does not mean that you have multiple personalities. Okay, what that means is that you are a dynamic person and you have the ability to adapt and adjust to different situations and respond to those situations according to um, your perception of it. It is not healthy to just like have one response to every situation because then you are using a hammer when you need to drill. You know what I mean? You're, you know, you're, uh, yeah, you're not, you're not using the right tool for the job. Or should I say the appropriate tool for the job? I'm not telling you, you know, what you should or shouldn't feel, but I'm saying that there are responses to things that are healthy, um, that are to be expected, you know, they're, they're normal, normal range responses, okay, how about that, rather than trauma responses. Now, if every time you encounter a problem, your uh, response is to uh, pretend it doesn't exist, well, you're going to end up with worse problems, right? <clears throat> that's how the narcissist kind of works. Is, uh, you know, that's, that, that's what they want, is they want you to ignore the problem. Act like it doesn't exist. Which just allows them to perpetrate more harm on you. So, when you have these different emotional responses or physical responses or whatever response that you have um, in any given situation, 
but you're still conscious of it. You're still aware of it. That's still you. Uh, stuck here waiting on a light. A little bit late for work. I'm having a Monday. <laughs> um, there we go. <coughs> the joys of driving a standard transmission. You know, so the struggle is to reintegrate those parts of yourself. Kind of like be able to accept those parts of yourself and bring them back inside. You know, rather than shedding them out in the cold and having this distance. And the difficult part is a lot of times it can feel like we don't have control over that. Right? Because the abuser programmed us to not feel like we have control. Because guess what? That's how they keep control. So, you know, if you're experiencing something like that, go find a good therapist. You know, good trauma-informed therapist because that is association. Or can be, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to diagnose. But... That is something that you can work through in therapy. You know, and I really strongly suggest it. Because it makes a huge difference. You don't want to be going through life like that. It sucks. You want to be able to be engaged. Like, engaged with life. You don't want to just be a bystander in your own body. Like, that's kind of one of the worst. Um, but it's really tough when you feel like you don't have any control over it. When you just, you know, like, I, well, I can't. I mean, this is out of my control. So, again, find a good therapist. But I can say that, that that feeling of fracturing, it's not just you. You're not the only one who's experienced it, if you have, or if you are. It got, it was so bad for me. Like, it was, it was so bad. It was so extreme. And one of the things that helped me the most was being able to get some space from my abuser. Um, it can be really, really hard to see what they are doing when you're in the middle of it. And when you are basically having to deal with it all the time, they keep you in that crazy making cycle. And so without the distance to kind of see the patterns and, uh, you know, be able to understand and recognize instead of being emotionally caught up in the moment and whatever manipulation they're attempting, um, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're just, so if you're caught up in that, it's, like I said, it's hard to see. And then if you do manage to get some distance from it, it can be a lot easier to identify that stuff. Because when you step, take a step back and look at the bigger picture, it's easier to see patterns. Um, you know, educate yourself on narcissistic abuse. That's that's like one of my number one things. Uh, because the more you understand what they are doing, the more you are going to understand it is not about you. It is not your fault. You are not making them do this. It's not about you. It's about them and their desire for power and control. That's what it's about. It's not your job to fix them or help them or heal them. It is your job to get out safely. Especially if you have kids. Because I cannot tell you the toll that it takes on kids to have a parent like that. They need at least one healthy parent and you cannot be a healthy parent around a narcissist or abuser. You just can't. I'm sorry. You know, you can try. You can try your hardest. But you're not going to be one. Sorry. That's just, it is what it is. 
<coughs> Looks like somebody else is late to work. <laughs> but you know what? If there's any grain of hope that I can, uh, you know, leave you with is that healing from that is completely possible. It is entirely and completely possible. How do I know? Because I've done it. So even if you're in that place right now and you are struggling with it, know that, you know, you're not alone in that. You're not the only one who is dealing or has dealt with that. And for two, know that you can heal from it. Know that it's not a life sentence unless you choose for it to be. All right, guys. It's been fun. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.